Hello everyone and welcome back to the next part of our Creating a Boss in Minecraft series easy edition. Oh, it's really a mouthful, that really just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? <laughs> so far, we've designed a King Slime boss for our players to fight, and set up a few chains to get him to spawn, as well as some timers to trigger new attacks at different times. Today, we're going to be revisiting our five steps to creating a great boss in Minecraft, and see what else we need to work on before we can get our boss fightable. So, looking back over our five steps to making a good Minecraft boss we came up with in our first video, we've already given our King Slime a health bar, we've made him imposing by adjusting his attributes, and we've even added minions slash another threat by having him spawn weakening baby slimes throughout the fight. For an easy difficulty boss, we are cruising right along. We're going to take today's episode to talk about the last two steps, as well as our environment for fighting the boss itself. First off, the fourth step was to create strategy when fighting our boss. Now, out of our five steps, this one is definitely the most abstract. What do I mean when I say create a strategy for a boss fight? Well, if we remember back to our Ender Dragon clip, Fighting the dragon isn't simply a matter of out-damaging a sitting target while he fires different attacks at you. Instead, the devs at Mojang wanted the players to have to work to really engage with the dragon by adding ender crystals on top of tall plinths that the players would have to destroy in order to prevent health regeneration of the boss. I borrowed this idea in my pumpkin video, where I had skeletons granting regeneration to the pumpkin until they were defeated. We can think about strategy as a part of a scale, that fluctuates as the players encounter the boss. The overall thing we're trying to balance is an engaging boss fight. So to do that, we need a challenge set by us, the designers. Now, to balance out that challenge, there must be a solvable strategy that is either intentional or unintentional that can be solved by the players. In the Ender Dragon's case, the challenge was to have a flying enemy that regained health from towers. The strategy that emerged was for players to climb the towers or shoot at the crystals from a distance to lessen the challenge of the fight. I could sit here all day and talk about design philosophy on how to balance encounters like this properly, but in the interest of making a relatively simple and straightforward boss tutorial, let us supplement this equation with something different. Challenge can come from a lot of places in an encounter. As our boss fight is right now, the majority of the challenge comes from a balancing act of getting close enough to hit the slime boss, but not too close that he leaps at you and hurts you. This is fine as it is, but I think we should take this momentum idea a step further. And one place we can look to find both challenge and the emergence of strategy is in an arena. So, over here I've constructed a basic arena that our players will be fighting our boss in. As you can see, it's nothing fancy, and doesn't have any, seemingly, moving parts. But something you will notice is the added challenge of slime blocks strewn about the arena. Slime blocks are both a blessing and a curse in Minecraft. While they make terrain uneven and difficult to navigate, they also maintain a small portion of vertical momentum while jumping on them. So, our challenge has increased slightly by making the terrain slightly harder to run through. How do we account for player strategy to balance this out? Well, like any game, you can't completely predict what players will try and do, especially in a sandbox game like Minecraft. Honestly, it's quite possible many players will just try and shoot the boss with a bow. We've slightly discouraged this with baby slimes that spawn hunting down the players, but I'm sure it's still a viable strategy. But let's encourage another course of action, using the slime blocks to the player's advantage. What I've done here is simply put a few sticky pistons underneath slime blocks around the map that are currently unpowered. What we can do is add another action to our timer that powers all of the pistons for a short duration, causing some of the slime blocks to extend, creating a jump pad for the player. We'll also use our previous knowledge of area effect clouds that we use to make the weakening slimes to make buff areas for players. It should be noted that this whole arena section is entirely optional. While you should keep in mind the idea of a scale to balance challenge versus strategy, you don't need an arena or even timed attacks to do this. I'm merely offering an example of something I think works and is thematic with our fight. Feel free to get creative and really encourage all sorts of different styles of gameplay. But in an effort to keep this video within the easy category of our different tiered boss tutorial videos in the future, I've decided to instead just set up the command blocks and redstone for the arena in the back end because it ended up being a little bit convoluted and wasn't as coherent to an easy level arena as I wanted it to be for all the viewers. So instead I thought I'd just 
fast track that part and show you guys the finished product. But like I just said, if you're interested in creating your own arena, go ahead and get creative. Anything that adds a little bit of challenge to your players will also give them a way to make an emergent strategy. If you are interested in seeing the behind the scenes on how we rig this arena up, be noted it is a little more intermediate than I would have liked for this video. Again, why I decided to cut it out. But a detailed walkthrough of me setting up this arena specifically will be made available on my Patreon for all level 3 kips and above. In fact, lots of behind the scenes content comes to the level 3 kips and above on Patreon, but there are a whole other slew of benefits you can get from subscribing at any tier, so if you are interested in supporting me in that way, that would be incredibly generous. Anyway, now that I don't have to do all the advanced setting up, we can focus on moving right along and continue building our boss. Okay, for our easy level boss, this is going to cover the strategy section. There are so many more things I'd love to talk about, but I'll save them for the intermediate and expert level boss series. For now, we need to move on to the final step, abilities. Let's look at our Ender Dragon template once more so we can really get a sense for abilities it uses. It seems to have a couple of different abilities that she uses to fight the player. It can charge a player, dealing different contact damage depending on if it hits a player with its head or its wing. It can strafe around and shoot dragon fireballs. And it can perch and spew dragon breath, leaving a damaging effect on the ground similar to the fireballs. The Ender Dragon actually has a few more states than this, but these are the abilities that players are most familiar with. So looking at this from a game perspective, the dragon does a charging melee attack, a dodging projectile attack, and a more direct AoE attack. These are all pretty standard as far as RPG boss fights go. So back to our King Slime. Right now, it doesn't actually have any special attacks. Sure, it summons slimes, but that's not really the king himself doing anything special. So today, we are going to finally talk about the last major part of this boss fight, a slam attack. To not overcomplicate things, the slam attack will be fairly straightforward. We want to give our boss another ability that players have to watch out for. Basically, after a certain amount of time, we want our slime boss to teleport high in the sky directly above one player, and come slamming down upon them. So let's just go ahead and add another repeating command block here for a new ability. And same as before, do execute if score world king slime timer matches. And now I can already tell that we have a lot of abilities that are taking up a small amount of time on our boss timer, so I'm probably going to come back and adjust the timings later as I see fit. But for now and for testing, I'll just put 100. And then we're going to need to mess with location. So we'll want a reference point as our slime by doing as at E. And then once again, we need to target it by its name. King of Slimes. Oh, make sure that's capital. Then we'll select a random player to teleport at by doing at at <laughs> R. And just to make sure it's another player within the arena and not elsewhere on the server, we'll also add the distance tag of within 20 blocks. And before we go a step further, when I record my videos, I often use spectator mode, which means that if there are spectators watching this boss fight in creative or spectator mode, the King Slime might teleport to them instead. So we can actually very quickly add another tag here by doing game mode equals, and we'll do survival. Now, if you're going to set your players to adventure mode, which you totally can, you can change this to be adventure. And basically this just means the King of Slimes will be teleported to a player within 20 blocks that is of the game mode survival. Alternatively, you can instead do game mode not and then spectator. Meaning that if you do have people specifically in spectator mode, the King Slime will not teleport to them. Which works for our purposes. Finally, to actually teleport our King Slime, we need to do run TP at S because we're running it as the King Slime. And then because it's targeting a nearby random player, we will do tilde to do a normal X coordinate, tilde 20 to do a Y coordinate plus 20 blocks, and then just tilde to do a normal Z coordinate. And then the last thing that you're going to need before we move on from this, because we're talking about locale, we need to add the positioned parameter. Now, what the position parameter actually does is it sets up the specific command to be originally executed from wherever we give it space. Now, I know that sounds a bit confusing, but all that really means is, as you can see, it's looking for a place to execute it. Because if we don't give this a place to execute the command, the command block thinks the command block is the center of where we want to execute this command. And for when we're trying to teleport our slime around, 
that's not going to fly because it's going to center our command here instead of on our slime. Now, that's actually really easy to change because we can do positioned as. And then because we've already done execute as name king of slimes, we can simply do positioned as at s or the same person that we've already decided is executing the command. Don't worry too much about this. Just remember you need positioned as at s. So just setting this once will teleport our slime king 20 blocks above a random player within 20 blocks that is not in spectator mode when our timer hits 100. This is great, but our slime will immediately fall back down, which doesn't give the player a ton of time to react. Instead, what we're going to do is add another repeating command block that will have the king slime hovering in the air for a second or two. Here we'll do something very similar by doing execute if score world king slime timer matches. And here now we want it to be directly after we teleport the slime. So we'll do 101 or 101 ticks. We'll do two dots and then 141. This is essentially a two second timer. For this run command, we simply want to keep the king slime in place, hovering above a player. We want to make sure we do as, at E, target it by its name, and then also at, at S to make sure we know where we're targeting the command. And then finally, run TP at S, just like before, but now we just want to keep it at its local coordinates. We don't want to change anything. This will technically continually teleport it to its own position for two seconds before it falls to the ground. This is great. Now the players will have a chance to get out of the way. But it's still missing something. All of the Ender Dragon's extra attacks have some sort of visual cue. You know, purple particle effects, the flapping of the wings. Sure, our slime leaps into the air, but why not add a shadow on the ground to let players know where the slime is? After all, we can do this pretty easily with the tools we've already learned. You guessed it, an area effect cloud will work perfectly for this. We just need to make it look good and get the timing right. So in a third repeating command block, very similar to our other ones, we'll want another execute if score of dummy world slime timer matches. And then we want to mirror the timer from the previous command block because that's how long we want the shadow to show. So we'll do 101 to 141. We're going to do as at E slimes. And then just like before, we're going to need another positioned as at s because we're dealing with particles again the command is going to think that the command block is the center of where we want to spawn those particles which isn't true of course we want to position them beneath our king slime so once we've done that we can put run and then simply paste in the command the summon command from mc stacker once again this will be in the paste bin below but remember you can just design this to be whatever you want if you even want to add a shadow now, the duration is set to two to make sure that the particles, you know, they're summoned every tick, but they last two ticks so you can actually see them on screen. And the reason that we have the coordinates set to be local, local negative 20, local, is because the slime is jumping 20 blocks above the player. So if we set the particles to be 20 blocks below our king slime, that way we can actually see the particles on the ground. Okay, I think it's time for some testing quickly fly back over here and we'll just wait for it to reach 100 and then we'll see what happens. What should happen is our King of Slime should teleport above us. We should see the shadow on the ground and then after two seconds, they'll slam back down to the ground. But you'll notice something occurred when our King Slime did his famous slime slam and that was that our King of Slimes took a bit of damage, <laughs> which is not very befitting of a king who loves to slam things. Sure enough, if you watch it again, the King of Slimes actually dies to the fall damage. What's going on with that? Well, despite what you might believe, slimes do indeed take fall damage in Minecraft. Not very bouncy of them, is it? Not only that, what's up with our King Slimes health bar not filling to full? Well, these questions and more we're actually going to cover in our next and final video of the series, which is going to be all about loot drops, cleanup, and of course, fighting the boss itself. But as of right now, we have actually completed our five steps. In this video, we completed giving the battle some strategy by way of adding an arena and some dangers and advantages around the arena, and abilities by giving our King Slime a slime slam. With that said, we've done it. Pat yourselves on the back, we've actually created a good boss in Minecraft from scratch. But that's just going to about do it for today's video. 
Like I said, the next video in the series will be the final one, where we cover the last things we need to know about cleaning up our boss, the loot drops, and, of course, an actual showcase of us fighting it. But like I've said before, these videos take plenty of time to edit, write, and put together, so if you found this helpful in any way, make sure you leave a like on the video, and if you have any ideas of anything creative you'd change about this boss, or things you have changed about this boss in your own creation, please let me know in the comments below. I'm always super excited to learn about what you guys are working on. Speaking of what you guys are working on, if you're interested in sharing more about your boss ideas or other Minecraft-related command things, we do have a Discord which will be linked down in the description below where you can come and talk to like-minded individuals, chat with me, or even ask questions to others about command issues you may be having at the moment. But that's all for now, and until next time guys, see ya!